Maybe I should have made this video before my first video. Well, if I'd done that, I would have just told you to get all the equipment that I was told to get, so we'd both end up with a ton of equipment that we don't need and don't need to use, probably. However, oh, given my experience now, experience now, I feel that I can distinguish the various bits of equipment that we need into essentials, necessities, luxuries, and what I just think are unnecessary. I would define essentials as things that you need to start tailoring. I tried to pare it down as much as possible, making the entry barrier as low as possible, but which kind of just creates more competition in the industry for me, kind of, but it's what I'd want and what I'd have wanted to see last year. Necessities are what I'd buy if I had a bit of extra pocket money. You don't need them, but they're useful. And luxuries are expensive or specialized items like fabric scissors are expensive as all hell and a hole punch has one use in the entire suit depending on how you count and finally i have a section for unnecessary items which things that i was told to get and didn't and don't feel like i'm missing out at all things that i just think are a waste of time i'll take this opportunity to really make clear that this is my experience and mine alone, and only about a year's experience at that. So let's not hear any this better, this other better tailor says that his scissors are his most important piece of equipment. This isn't a guide for better, more experienced tailors. Exactly the opposite, in fact. No, that's a lot of damage! In the same vein, I also want to say that I don't feel that Good equipment will make a bad tailor good, but it will make a good tailor better. Everything in its categories is listed in no particular order. And things like fusing and trimmings I'll leave off for future videos, or past videos in the jacket's case, I suppose. What I'll also be leaving off is three things. So, a sewing machine, and equipment necessary thereof, an iron and ironing board, and a work surface. Well, kind of leaving off since I'm talking about them now. Work surface wise, I started with the long and thin desk, and then I switched to a 90 by 150 centimeter medium density fiber board, board, whatever. And then I upgraded that to this, which is just a 90 by 150 centimeter plywood board, only 15, 9, 15 millimeters thick, which I sanded and varnished at a cost of a little bit less than 30 pounds. I was lucky because my mum has a sewing machine, or had, I suppose, depending on how you count. Without which, I undoubtedly wouldn't be here. Well, the sewing machine isn't what got me into tailoring, so who knows. But I've put a little bit of thought into this. There are a bunch of really cheap and inexpensive sewing machines on the market, and I feel like I kind of want to, you know, just buy a selection of them to see if they're worthwhile at all, like, at the very least, functional. Maybe even if only temporarily. Also, equipment necessary thereof includes bobbins, maybe zip feet, spare needles, oil, maintenance stuff. An iron is an iron, and if you don't have an iron, I'm not quite sure how you find your way onto this video, but if you have an iron, you usually have an ironing board. And actually, I annoyingly found out too late that I could use my work surface as an ironing board, which I would have preferred to have found out before my trouser construction videos, but 
C'est la vie. I think there are some irons that aren't steam irons, but I don't think I've ever come across one, so get a steam iron if there are options available. Now, a tailor's thimble is important because it's being worn for long periods of time. My thimble is kind of annoying because it's adjustable, so the adjustable bits sometimes catch the thread when I'm sewing. I had half a mind to take it to the jewelers to have them close over the adjustability bit, but I saw that it closed, and that seems to have solved the minor and occasional problem I had. With normal open top thimbles, you need to measure the diameter of your middle finger in order to get the right size. At the time of this video coming out, you won't even remember what coronavirus is, I bet. So you can go and try on thimbles. I absolutely do not suggest buying a thimble online unless it unless it's an adjustable one. Moreover, a tailor's thimble is really important because realistically you need to go at a certain pace, otherwise any everything you do is going to take forever and you're going to get dejected and give up. And if you want to be a tailor, you kind of need to learn how to use the equipment. Unless you're disabled or crippled in some way, in which case I suppose it's kind of on you to figure out. You won't get very far without thread. Cotton or polyester, it kind of doesn't matter. They are almost completely interchangeable, even though polyester is empirically superior in every way. Personally, I suggest getting a signature colour which will make all your samples nice and uniform and stand out or, you know, at the very least be recognisable as yours. Me personally, I've got a pistachio coloured, pistachio green that I like. That said, I also bought two, well, three now, one kilometre reels of thread that I mostly use on, mach on my machine in black and white. They've lasted years at this point. I could use those instead of my pistachio coloured thread, but the point is, you need thread. And it feels kind of odd to include thread in equipment, but I think it'd be worse to leave it out. On the other hand, I definitely define basting thread as a piece of equipment. But if you only want to dip your toe into tailoring, then a small 200 meter reel will do you well and last a little while. Now beeswax. Beeswax is not a necessity or a luxury. It is an essential. Used properly, it completely inhibits twisting, coiling and knotting of the thread and supposedly makes it stronger, but I feel like that's a less important use. Try out using beeswax once, then try it with, and then try without again. Personally, I did that and I just felt a little... Frustrated! Well, I was going to say completely filled with rage, but yeah, frustrated. A multi-pack of betweens or quilting needles will do you fine. Between sizes 3 to 9. 3 for basting and, you know... 789 for regular sewing. In a pinch, you could use whatever, but being standardized in this case, I'd say is the best, is the way to go. You need a pair of simple all round scissors. The scissors that I recommend are kind of on the high end side, 20 pounds. You just need a pair of scissors that can do whatever. These ones are Japanese, I like them. They can cut through Kevlar, though let's not get into why I'm cutting Kevlar. I've had mine for years, so I think they're starting to dull, but they will serve you for every possible purpose in the context of tailoring. I have my own affiliate link down there, and there's also a link to the Gentleman's Gazette video, which is where I got these from. 
So you can either use somebody's affiliate link who deserves it, or mine. You'll decide yourself whether you need whether you prefer rectangular chalk or triangular chalk, but the only colour that's really an essential I'd say is white. However, yellow is useful if you're using white fabrics or using lining paper from B&Q instead of brown pattern paper. Though when you get a multi-pack you could definitely use your blue or pink on the white paper, but in tailor shops those determine asymmetries, but we're not thinking about those, so but we're not thinking about those immediately. Any kind of ruler? A quilting ruler being a transparent ruler with grids and markings on it. But a more plan pattern master is what I've had since day one and what I'd recommend. That said, if it's not possible, then a regular ass tiny 15 centimeter ruler is, or a smaller 15 centimeter quilting ruler is a good shout. But really, if you have a pattern master or a large quilting ruler, then that makes any other kind of ruler mostly a necessity, I'd say, in my opinion. You won't get very far if you can't draw patterns, so pens or a pencil. I got these pencils from the National Army Museum when I went there for a, an exhibition on the King's Man, which was cool, and I found these in the gift shop, made of American incense cedar, and they smell exactly how pe pencils supposed to smell. Which might be a weird thing to say, but it does smell very nice. The graphite is much thicker than most refillable pencils, so they come with a sharpener. And you can buy refills from Penco, which come in a small cardboard cylinder. I think they do anyway. They're the best refillable pencil ever, I think, and they're Japanese as well. Masking tape, especially if you're using lining paper rather than pattern paper, you need to stick sheets together in order to make a jacket pattern. And just in general, you can draw over it and see through it mostly and remove it mostly safely if necessary. I've found myself needing a rubber at a few points in the last year-ish, whatever, and it wouldn't go amiss if you just got an own brand one for like 17 pence. It's kind of like a better have it not need it kind of thing. For pins, in a pinch you could use needles, which is why they aren't in essentials, but I got some black ones from Mac and Wallace because I think that they look cool. Though Supposedly they can rub off on lighter materials, though that hasn't happened at all in my experience. If you know that you want to do tailoring, and this isn't a fad for you, then a 5km reel of basting thread is just the economical option. You get 25 times the amount of thread for about 5 times the price of the smaller reel. It will literally last you for years. As you start making things for yourself and others, and you get fabrics, you'll be getting threads of the same colour or contrasting, I suppose. So it isn't the kind of thing you can go out and buy. If you were to go out, go online and try to buy every colour of a 250 metre Gutemann polyester thread, it would cost you about £300. But I think the main advantage of buying them one at a time is that you can say, this will make a fine addition to my collection. Or something else if you're more into Pokemon. 
a short ruler. If you don't have one already, just a short 15 centimeter ruler is more mobile and yeah, it's more mobile than your pattern master or long pattern making ruler. So it's just something quite convenient to have and it's not a not very expensive. Same for long rulers. Mine is about a little bit more than half a meter, I think, but a meter one would do you better. It's just helpful for measuring and pattern drafting, and I think that's about it. For tape measures, definitely get one with a tab. It'll help out with measuring yourself and other people. And a tape measure, of all things, I haven't put in essentials because you're not going to start measuring people immediately. Although, I suppose that is your prerogative. Literally a block of wood. It's... Mine is literally a scrap from a block of pine, and you can just use it as like a post-iron press which will absorb moisture, so ideally a porous, more porous type of wood, allowing you to set things that you've ironed more quickly and more fully, as it were. And if yours is a pine plank as well, then you could kind of use it as an as a sleeve board or an edge board as well. You aren't and shouldn't spend less than a hundred pounds on a pair of fabric scissors. And I'd anticipate that I'll catch a lot of flack from other tailors defining fabric scissors as neither a essential or necessity, but like I said, this is just my thoughts. What's special about fabric scissors is that the angle of the blade is much more shallow, making it more specialised to cutting fabric. However, the downside, well, kind of downside to that, is that they blunt more easily when you cut things like paper, which is why your regular scissors are an absolute essential. It's also why you hear about fabric scissors getting sharpened, it isn't just being sentimental or being cost-efficient, although I suppose technically it is very much both those things. And honestly, if I hadn't been told that I had to go and buy a pair of fabric scissors back when I first started, you'd be hard-pressed to get me to buy a pair anyway. But I was, and I did, and I wouldn't go back and change that, I really don't think. I really don't think I would. They are a luxury, because they are ultra-effective and make cutting fabric much easier. But in short, they aren't a necessity. But if you have some extra money to invest in your tailoring equipment, then a pair of fabric scissors is a good place to go. Mine are the Kai 7280. Same as, same brand as the... My other scissors and I bought them from Mac and Wallace. This isn't necessarily a recommendation, it is a decision that you'll have to make. Fergie pattern rulers. They only make these in America, and they cost a pretty penny before you take into account postage and undoubtedly import tax. Personally, I've gotten to where I am with just my long ruler and pattern master, that said, they are good for drawing consistent curves and long lines and long right-angled lines and such like. And another piece of mar and a piece of marketing that they use to try and convince you to buy them, as it were, I think, is it sort of calculates simple fractions for you, like on the just on the sides, so like halves, sixths, quarters, eighths, etc. But if you can't do those simple fractions, in your head, on paper, or on the calculator on your phone, then we can't be friends. Although if you're still in primary school and you have, you don't understand what a fraction is yet, then we can't be friends for a different reason. Having determined your preferred needle sizes, like I like threes and I don't even know to be honest, like 
sevens, I think, then you may want to buy individual packs of John James's Betweens needles. So, 25 packs of a single needle. I assume that needles dull over time, so having 25 of the same thing is just the correct long-term strategy. But at the moment, my two basting needles and four regular sewing needles they haven't let me down yet, so that's why they're in luxuries. Now an all bodkin thing is a thing that makes holes in fabric and canvases without tearing it, which you'll see or will see in my trouser construction part 2 video. And in that video, I don't have one, so I just use a needle what else do I use? Nail and small screwdriver to make my unbroken holes. If you don't care to get that piece of equipment that nobody seems to be able to agree on the name of, then, you know, just improvise, adapt, overcome. You'll be fine. A hole punch really rather becomes necessary when you start practicing doing buttonholes. My one just came from a button clasp kit, but I kind of need a hammer to make it work, I suppose. And I use my wooden block with it as well. Really, I'd suggest a manual one would be good, superior. I haven't put this in necessities because it is used for one single thing, again, depending on how you count. And realistically, I'd say you can get away, when practicing buttonholes, you can get away with just sort of cutting the keyhole in the buttonhole early on. But when you start really getting into practicing buttonholes, then they really do become an essential. A sleeve board is especially useful when it comes to pressing the seams open on sleeves, but like I mentioned earlier, if you just have a block of wood that's fairly useful as well. It's a good stand-in. An edge board is the same, but it's thinner and used for pressing open individual seams on the jacket. Tailor's cushions are used for ironing things that can't be ironed on flat surfaces, and this, like the sleeve board and edge board, I was really thinking about whether to put it in luxury or necessity, but I feel, figure I've gotten by without one quite well, but it would have been super useful in finishing my trousers. You can use a cloth brush on fabrics when you're done sewing them, it'll straighten out any fibres of the fabric, and it'll also usually remove chalk markings from it, so especially useful when finishing. But it's not a necessity or anything because you can also use a piece of the same fabric on a chalked fabric to rub off the chalk markings as well. It works quite well. Pattern hole punches and pattern hooks are used to hang up your patterns straight to keep them safe. And you really should hang your patterns up flat rather than folding them into small pieces or rolling them up. But I haven't put it in necessity because it's simple enough to jerry-rig basically the same thing with some string and a coat hanger. Snips are a tiny pair of, pair of scissors that you can use to split seams and cut away small threads. Honestly, I don't think they're necessary because you've got your other two pairs of scissors, but I've heard that they can be very useful. I'll either use my regular scissors, fabric scissors, or the or my single-sided razor blades for shaving, so uh, single-sided feather blades. I don't think a pincushion is necessary because I keep my pins and needles just in a piece of folded up fabric, 
personally works works for me. Can just fold them away nicely. But I don't know. I don't care to upgrade to a pin cushion. With the chalk sharpener, I was kind of torn. Luxury or necessity, because I mean you can use your ruler or scissors to sharpen your chalk, and you could likely go through your entire tailoring career without one, without a chalk sharpener. But I have seen some quite neat ones out there. Alright, a needle threader. Look, if you don't have the fine motor skills to thread a needle, then I'm not sure what hope you have, to be honest. And I definitely suggest not using them as a crutch when you first start, because using a needle threader really won't help you develop the skill needed to thread a needle. They're not like stabilizers. Now plinking shears, I was also quite torn about, but I suppose unnecessary. They inhibit cloth from fraying too badly. Some professionals use them to cut along the inlays, not all around the jacket, I'm pretty sure. Just some parts like the inlay. They're not needed, but if you want them, they will prevent your fabric from fraying. With a tracing reel, I gotta be honest, I don't even know, but I just don't want one. So me personally, I'm making do without. Feels like a, a dirty tool is not what I want to use, but it's just what comes to mind. I just have an odd disdain for it, I think. If you want a pair of tweezers for picking out difficult bits of mark stitching, then go for it, but I'm like, whatever. Same for an unpicker. Personally, I can get by without it, but I understand that they can also be very helpful. Now, uh, French curves are a lot like Fairgate pattern rulers, and usually I'd be all on board for French curves, but in this case I've got my pattern master, so kind of feel like I don't have a place for them. I can draw most of the curves I need, and the rest of them I can get with my pattern master. These last few, I just went through the original list I was given. They were so completely unnecessary that I had trouble thinking of them in my opinion. Anyway, that's my list for now. I suppose stand by for a possibly updated one next year.